Welcome to an introduction to domain and range. The domain of a function is a set of all possible values for the input variable, also known as the independent variable, which is often x. And the range of a function is a set of all possible values for the output variable, or the dependent variable, which is often y. Looking at example one, we're asked to consider the function below. So this first row gives us the x values of the inputs. The second row gives us the function values, or the outputs. So we're first asked to list the input values, which would be, again, the x values. So we have negative two, zero, two, four, and six. And now we're asked for the domain. And because the domain is a set of all possible inputs, these values are the domain. So negative two, zero, two, four, and six. And now we're asked to list all the output values, which would be these function values here. So we have three, negative seven, 11. Notice here we have three again. Because it's already listed, we don't list it again. And then we have the output value of eight. And now we're asked to give the range. And because the range is a set of all possible values for the output, these values are the range that we should put them in order from least to greatest. So let's list them as negative seven, three, eight, and 11. For example two, we're given a set of ordered pairs and asked to determine the same information. When we have ordered pairs, remember, the first value of the first coordinate gives us the input, and the second value of the second coordinate gives us the output. So the input values will be the first coordinates, our first value in each ordered pair. So we have two, five, eight, and 11. Once again, because the domain is a set of all possible values for the input, these input values are the domain, two, five, eight, and 11. The output values are going to be the second coordinates or the second values in each ordered pair. So we have negative four, seven, zero, and 23. And finally, because the range consists of all the possible values for the output, these output values are the range. But again, we do wanna put them in order from least to greatest. So negative four, zero, seven, and 23. Now for example three, we're asked to consider the graph of f of x shown below and determine the domain and range. So remember the domain is a set of all possible inputs and the range is a set of all possible outputs or function values. We always find the input values along the horizontal axis, or in this case the x-axis, and because the x-axis moves from left to right, to help us find the domain, we can ask ourselves how does this graph behave moving from left to right? We can also think of projecting this graph onto the x-axis. Notice how the leftmost point of this graph is here at an x value of negative four. The rightmost point on the graph is over here at x equals six. So notice how this function takes on all of the input values from negative four to positive six and also includes the endpoints because we have a closed endpoint here and a closed endpoint here. If we think about squishing and projecting this graph onto the horizontal axis, notice how it would start here and end here, which means the domain is x is less than or equal to positive six and greater than or equal to negative four. It may be hard to see, but this is negative four on the horizontal axis and this is positive six. It doesn't ask, but if we wanted to express this using interval notation, we'd have the closed interval from negative four to positive six, because the endpoints are included, we'd use square brackets here and here. Now, to determine the range, because the outputs occur on the vertical axis, we want to ask ourselves, how does this graph behave vertically? Meaning, how low does it go and how high does it go? We can also think of projecting this onto the y-axis. Notice how the lowest point of this function occurs down here where the y value or output would be negative one. This is a closed point, so the interval would include negative one. The highest point on this graph is here where the output value would be here at positive eight. 
And this function has every output value from negative one all the way to positive eight. Again, if we think of projecting this or squishing this onto the vertical axis, the lowest point would be here and the highest point would be here. And therefore the range is when f of x is less than or equal to positive eight and greater than or equal to negative one. Again, this is positive eight on the vertical axis and this is negative one on the vertical axis. Using interval notation, we'd have the closed interval from negative one to positive eight. Again, we're including eight here as well because this point is closed. If it was open, we would not include eight in the interval. The interval would be open on eight. Now let's look at our last example. We're asked to determine the domain and range of each of the following functions. We have a of x, b of x, and c of x. Notice how the graphs look almost the same except some of the endpoints are closed points and some of the endpoints are open points. So this will affect the domain and range. So looking at a of x, let's first find the domain. The domain is a set of all possible inputs which we find along the horizontal axis which moves left and right. So to find the domain, we want to ask ourselves how does this graph behave moving from left to right? The leftmost point is this point here where the input is negative four and notice how the point is closed, so negative four is in the domain. The rightmost point is this point here where the input is positive one. Notice how the function does take on all the inputs from negative four through positive one, and again, because the endpoints are closed, we include the endpoints in the domain. So the domain is going to be x is less than or equal to positive one and greater than or equal to negative four. We're using interval notation, we have the closed interval from negative four to positive one. We use square brackets because the endpoints are included. And now for the range, which is a set of all possible outputs, and we find the outputs along the vertical axis, we want to ask ourselves, how does the graph behave vertically or moving up or down? The lowest point on the graph is this point here. Notice at this point the output would be zero because the point is closed. The output of zero is included in the range. The highest point on the graph is this point here where the output is positive three. This function takes on all the outputs from zero to three, including the endpoints. And therefore the range is a of x is less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to zero. Using interval notation, we have the closed interval from zero to three. And of course, we can also think about projecting the graph onto the horizontal and vertical axes. Notice if you project it onto the horizontal axis, the graph would start at negative four and go to positive one, including the endpoints. If you project it onto the vertical axis, the graph would start at the output value of zero and go up to the output value of positive three. Again, including both endpoints. Now looking at b of x, notice how the only difference here is that the endpoints are open points along the horizontal axis. Negative four is not included because of the open point. Positive one is not included because of the open point, but all the values between these two are in the domain, which means now the domain would be when x is less than one and greater than negative four. We're using interval notation, we now use rounded parentheses to show the endpoints are not included. And the same thing for the range. The lowest point is here where the output would be zero because the point is open. The range now does not include zero. The highest point is still here where the output would be three, but because the point is open, three is now not in the range. But all the values between these two are, so now the range is the open interval from zero to three. So we would say that b of x is now less than three and greater than zero. We're using interval notation, the open interval from zero to three. And now for c of x, because this point is closed and this point is open, it will affect the domain and range. For the domain now, the input of negative four is included because of the closed point, but because we have an open point here when the input is one, one is not in the domain. So the domain now, would be when x is less than one and greater than or equal to negative four. Using interval notation from negative four to one, it includes negative four and doesn't include positive one. And finally for the range, 
the low point is here where the output is zero. The point is closed, so zero is in the range. The high point is here where the output would be three, but the point is open, so three is not in the range. The range is between zero and three, including zero, not including three. So we would have C of X is less than three and greater than or equal to zero. We're using interval notation from zero to three, not including three, but including zero. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.